So you finally decided you wanted to become a data analyst. Congratulations. I was actually in your shoes not too long ago. I was kind of lost, didn't really know what I wanted to do, just a bit unsure about myself in general. But I knew I had to make money and I wanted to work a career that I actually enjoyed. I just came off an internship in finance that I just absolutely despised the work I was doing. Don't get me wrong, it was fun and all, but it was just a bit mundane and I just didn't see myself doing it for the rest of my career. And that's where data analysis came in. Most of my roles, I was actually able to work from home, make decent money, and also work on problems I was actually passionate about. Now there's only one problem. How do we actually learn data analysis? And everyone on YouTube was saying projects, projects, projects. And here I am a few years later saying the exact same thing. So I was just a bit confused. Like, what do you mean by projects? How do I even start? So me being a naive kid, I decided to ignore all these people's advice of saying to do projects and just enroll in a bunch of courses. I enrolled in a Coursera course. I enrolled in a Udemy course. I enrolled in LinkedIn Learning. Literally almost every provider you can think of, I probably enrolled in their course. The problem was I wasn't finishing these courses and I wasn't actually learning anything. Little progress was being made until one day one of my friends reached out and said hey we should actually work on a data analysis project so me and my friend actually went on to Kaggle and we tried to figure out what type of projects to work on. And this one data set came up in particular. There was a large project going on around the Titanic data set. The only issue was I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't know what tools to use. I didn't know what problems to solve. I didn't even know what data analysis was to be working on a project. I just didn't feel confident in myself and neither the people I was working with. There were so many questions racing in my head, but fast forward a few months, I was much more comfortable using Python for data cleaning, data visualization, and just simple data analysis, which I wouldn't have been able to do if I just kept doing courses. Don't get me wrong, there was a lot of Googling and a lot of hard work that went into it, but I wouldn't have learned these if I just didn't pick up a project and just start coding. So now what's the first step and what's the roadmap to actually picking out a data analysis project? The first thing you need to do is identify your interest. Look, it's much easier to work on a project you're actually interested about than a project you're being forced to do. So I could tell you to analyze some manufacturing products, goods, supply chain, something random, but chances are you probably wouldn't actually enjoy it and chances are you wouldn't learn much from it. You're much more likely to actually finish a project on a problem you're actually interested in solving. So let's say you're interested in fantasy football. Do a fantasy sports project, there's nothing stopping you. You don't need to be doing something that you think people will like. Do something you actually like. The key here is to make the least barrier of entry into whatever project you actually want to do. The next step is identify problems in the market you're trying to solve. So let's take the manufacturing example. Chances are you probably didn't work in manufacturing or if you did, maybe this is right for you. But if you didn't work with manufacturing, you wouldn't know what are the pain points in the industry. You wouldn't know what you were solving for. But if you take something you're actually interested in like fantasy football or I don't know, maybe beauty, like e-commerce, you can actually point out specific pain points that you see. So if you're interested in marketing, you wanna analyze what are the best and most effective ways to increase ROAS, return on ad spend. And this is what we like to call domain knowledge or specific knowledge. This is something that's your competitive edge of something you actually understand. Don't get me wrong, I'm not telling you you should be working on fantasy football projects for all your projects. And those of you who've been on this channel for a while now know that I recommend doing more practical projects, but while getting started and just learning the skills, do something with the least barrier of entry while choosing your interest in your field. The next step is assessing your skill level. Look, you don't need to make an advanced machine learning project or need to be coding these advanced algorithms. All you need to do is start with a simple exploratory data analysis project where you're just calculating mean, median, and mode of different columns or just trying to convert a data type. Just start very small and focus on what you know. So if you were to start a project and I was to tell you to create this machine learning project on the Forex market with Python and I don't know, TensorFlow or Scikit-Learn, chances are you've never used these things. So it's much harder for you to start a data analysis project on something you have no experience in whatsoever. You wanna start off something simple. So let's say you have some experience with Excel. Start a project with Excel on a fantasy sports league and figure out the mean, median, and mode. I also have a video up analyzing NBA data points in Google Sheets. I highly recommend checking that video out because it's very simple, super simple project you can finish in 20 to 30 minutes just to really get your foot in the door in data analysis. Okay, the next step is actually choosing your data set. So remember, you're a beginner now. You don't need the most advanced, the large data set where you need this crazy PC to actually analyze. Choose something very simple and very small. This can be as simple as going to ChatGPT and saying, hey, generate me an ice cream data set for an ice cream truck, going over different flavors, their sales amounts. Now I'll actually output data. Although the data may not make as much sense, it's a great starting point and a great place to learn data analysis. There are also great websites I recommend like Kaggle, UCI, Google datasets to actually find simple datasets. The one thing I want you to keep in mind is some of these datasets on Kaggle are very, very beginner friendly. 
so they don't need as much data cleaning. Once you actually get into the workforce, real world data analysis will be much more complex joining all these different tables together, converting different data types, and there's a lot more nuance to the work you're actually doing. Like I said, take the path of least resistance, so do the simple step first, and then eventually you can build your way up to the more advanced data analysis techniques. So the next step is actually defining your objectives. What do you want to gain out of this analysis? Do you want to visualize the data? Do you want to deliver insights? Do you want to do forecasting? So having clear objectives before starting a project makes it a lot easier to roadmap and a lot easier to set expectations earlier on. I also recommend adding specific questions. So if you go to the Google Sheets video, I had very, very specific questions. Which NBA team taken three points made in the year 2024? You have to be very specific. You wanna be general and be like, oh, who is the best NBA player? How do you actually measure that? So when it comes down to it, you wanna be as specific as possible while coming up with questions, you wanna answer with data analysis. Okay, step five, you've actually planned out your objectives. How do you actually go about the analysis itself? So you wanna actually outline your approach, whether it be breaking down your analysis into steps such as data collection, data cleaning, exploration, and visualization. Planning it will actually help you stay on track and you can actually figure out which stage of the analysis you're in currently. So if you are working with groups, make sure your team members are on the same page of what you wanna do. So let's say you just wanna do data cleaning and you want your team member to do the analysis and some other team member to do the actual interpretation of the analysis. This gets a bit tricky because sometimes it's a bit disjointed and also robs you of the opportunity to learn the rest of the skill sets. So what I recommend is your group actually sit down and work on each stage together and just bounce ideas off each other, at least while getting started out. Once you actually get a few projects under your belt, you can actually start to divide tasks based on each stage, but I highly recommend actually just working together and just maybe even doing a project on your own while getting started. One of the biggest problems is you'll find someone to work with and you'll let them be the bottleneck in your learning. Look, it's your learning, it's your career. You don't wanna let someone stop you. So if you want to work with a group and your group isn't available to meet every day, chances are you probably aren't gonna finish the analysis and finish the project. So don't let anyone stop you from actually completing your project itself. If you do wanna find a group of people to work together on a data analysis project with, check my Discord down below. It has over 4,500 people in it, all interested in data analysis and there are people working on projects every single day. So at this point, you've planned your analysis, you've set your objectives, what do you do next? Next step is just start small. Just start, download that data set and just input it into whatever tool you're using, whether it be Excel, Google Sheets, SQL, Python, just have the data imported and ready to use. Another pro tip is start small. Take a subsect of the data. You don't have to use the whole 10,000 row data set. You can just start with a small 100 row data set and just get a feel of how to use the tool. So once you actually build up the confidence with smaller scale data sets, you can start scaling up and using larger and more complex data sets. And once you're comfortable, you can start iterating on your analysis process, adding in more details and adding in larger research. So in my current roles, when I do data science and data analytics, I have a research document and I actually have a bunch of mini analysis inside the research document itself. And together, all these mini analysis tell a story and compel and answer a larger, broader question on the research document. So what I recommend for you is take one of these small analysis, whether it be like, which NBA team is the best? And you have a bunch of mini questions there. Who has the highest three point percentage shooting? Who has the most points? Who has the most rebounds? So the last step in the process is actually documenting it. You wanna document as much as possible. So when it comes down to interviews and actually applying to jobs, you have a paper trail of the analysis you've done. So this could be creating a GitHub, creating a personal brand or personal website, updating your LinkedIn. Don't sleep on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is such a powerful tool to connect to recruiters and hiring managers. Put all your projects on your LinkedIn, connect with all the hiring managers, connect with all the recruiters and start messaging them. This is something I wish I did a lot sooner. I did cold email, but LinkedIn is obviously one of the best tools to actually land jobs and showcase your abilities as a data analyst. But if you keep detailed notes and you actually upload it to a GitHub, this will help a hiring manager or a recruiter actually see the work you've done and see if you're actually a good fit for the role. I've seen people get hired just off of projects that are relevant to the role they're hiring for. And lastly, compile a report, compile a presentation. There's a great book called Storytelling with Data we can actually see these different presentation methods and figure out which one is best for your analysis. Remember, when you're actually working as a data analysis, it's much more about the presentation sometimes than the actual analysis. If you have a great analysis and a poor presentation, chances are you're not gonna take your insights seriously and vice versa. So if you have a great presentation and poor analysis, they may take it, but it may be wrong. So you wanna be a bit balanced in both of them and you wanna be practicing them as soon as possible. So why not start with the project itself? So if you got this far in the video, I wanna thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.